Go back, go there. Go there, go there. Go there, follow, follow them. Come, 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 come here, come here, come here. Remove your hand, remove your hand. Stand up, let me see that this is sorry. Now, which day, what will today happen? apologize in case you are sensitive to because that's a very gory and uh, what's it called visual to see so police brutality is the excessive and unwanted use of force by law enforcement um, against an individual or a group of people it is an extreme form of um, police misconduct and is a civil rights violation police brutality includes but is not limited to beating, shooting, improper um, takedowns, and unwanted use of tasers. Now, we see a lot of this happening right in Nigeria, and it's not really acceptable. Um, so today we're asking, can, can we actually curb police brutality? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 a 3 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so ladies, I mean, this conversation is actually very tiring to have. Um, the whole event that happened October 20th, 2020, the NSARS and police brutality and all of that was just based on police brutality. And you would have thought that after all that outcry and everything and with all the, the, um, the things that happened, um, there would be some level of caution in, on the part of the police o official. But it seems like even some of them have become a lot more emboldened. The other day I saw a video online, a road safety officer, you know, he even broke the guy's phone. He was asking, demanding to check his phone or something. You see these things every day. Do we have guys that are into fraud in Nigeria? Yes, we have internet fraudsters. But are there better ways that the police can engage the citizens, right, that would not result into brutality like this? Now, the young man that, they were being, that was being chased, you know, I am sure it is Okada. Maybe the, he's riding. If you check it, it's not going to be far from the fact that he's riding an Okada in a barn area. And normally what they do is they seize the bike so that they can then use it for, you know, to go and they will go back and say, okay, pay a fine or something and all of that. It's not more than that. I don't think that that transaction will be more than that because that's usually what happens in those kind of areas. So they forcefully take it away from you. But to the extent where you take a baton and hit the boy to the point that his skin, his, his, his um, head is broken and blood gushing out, you know, I don't understand how, how. Yes, because, um, I mean, in 2020, when NSAS happened, I, I was very vocal about it, you know. And um, that was because, for me, it wasn't something I was seeing on social media. It was, I had a first-hand experience with the Nigerian police. I mean, I was coming from an event with a friend of mine. This was about maybe 7, 7 p.m. It wasn't dark, you know. And this was within Surulere. And these guys, these police guys, they were just almost in front of a police station. And the next thing, pack, pack. I mean, all that noise. The, you know, the way they talk, they, they speak, you know, with so much venom, you know, all that noise. And then, come down, come down, come down. Where are you coming from? Can, where, and then, what do you do? We brought out our ID cards. And we're like, oh, the, and the next thing, we had guns to our heads like guns. This was 7 p.m. 7 p.m. It was such a mad house because these guys were, they were trigger happy. They were going to shoot. People ran away. I mean, people literally left their cars and ran off. Out of those police guys, I mean, these were like eight guys. One of them was elderly. And so I knelt down. 
of course, I was agitated. I was already, I didn't even know what to do. I started speaking Yoruba. And then this man, obviously, he was a Yoruba man. He heard what I was saying. And he said to me, just come behind me. Just stand up and come behind me. So this guy moved. He, he shielded me, kind of. Moved towards his colleagues. And his colleagues pointed a gun at him. They were going to shoot him as well. Like, why are you defending? The, and the next thing, go and bring money. We will drag you to... So we had somebody somewhere. We didn't know whether maybe the person was hiding and was saying, if you follow them, that is raping on a different level and nobody will even see you guys again. So we kept, this old man just kept, you know, he just kept saying, just move far. Just be begging from far. Don't stay around them because these guys are high. These guys were in uniform. They, see, it was, so for me, every time I go out, and I have cause to be around police. I don't even, I, I, I don't want to hear, I don't, I don't want anybody around me arguing with them. You want to start, ex don't explain, please, let me just come down and move far. Because these guys, they can do an own, you don't know what they can do at any minute. Mm. I've seen them shoot someone. Because, I don't know, the person was trying to explain something. And the next thing, they were like, oh, he's a suspect. See, Nigerian police, they are a different breed. I, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a product of their mentality, if it's an, a psychological thing. If I've tried to rationalize it personally. I, I can't. I don't know where they're coming from, honestly. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you ask yourself, what would make a person stand up in broad daylight and just point a gun at someone and shoot the person dead and then you walk away hmm. what would make you do and you feel so you there's no remorse nothing i mean in other parts of the world you know police easily say oh i feel threatened yes because maybe in those societies gun violence is a serious issue in nigeria even when you see a yahoo boy or is I'm not sure that these are people or you would readily, in 10 Nigerians that they arrest, you would readily find six that will have guns. That will have just, any weapon. Yeah, well. exactly. So when they bring out a gun and the next thing is they, they want to shoot or they just immediately get, you can't even appeal to them. Mm. You can't explain. You can't talk. You can't try to reason with them. They just do whatever they want to do. And that's it. They get away. Nobody. Me, I can tell you. You see all these things we see on social media. They say, oh, we are taking action. Forget it. There's no action anywhere. It's just propaganda. There's no action anywhere. Hmm. There's no action. No oh action. No. Your story is quite scary. Oh, since then, me, if I, everybody, all my friends, they know. It's one of the reasons I don't go out at night. Yes. You're, I, always, I don't. you're always rushing to go home. I'm all, I, I, I don't. Anywhere I see a police checkpoint... I would rather come down and walk. I'll just walk past them. I might join the car in front or whatever. But I don't even want... If I'm with a driver and police stops and he tries to... I say, please. No, no, no. It, can, it cannot be. You cannot want to prove that you know. No. Mm -mm. It, if I'm in that it cannot work. You have to keep quiet. If they say anything, just say yes, sir. If they, yes, sir. What do... Yes, sir. You, don't please... Don't explain. Don't try to because prove your right. Thing, with what you said, mm. right, if there is a dead body on the ground, mm. right, and a gun is placed on the hands of that dead body, yeah. that dead body is an armed robber. It, uh, You're a criminal. Simple. Because, you, I mean, you can't tell who is a good person, who is... A, I mean, I've seen, I've heard of so many stories mm. of how they pin you know, oh, yeah. uh, um, criminality yeah. on people, yeah. you know, yeah. just because they want to defend why they've done why something. They, why, yeah. why some people were yeah. killed. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. let me hear your thoughts, Isi, and I'll come back to you, Glory. Wow. This, uh, the story by Adiola is Thanks. really frightening to be candid. It is. However, let us look at it from the point of view that police brutality is not just in Nigeria. Mm. It is worldwide, basically. It's not just in Nigeria. It's an extreme form of gross misconduct on the part of the police officer. And we have seen it in Apathide. We've seen it in America. We've seen it in, in whatever capacity, in different ways, where the 
government is trying to prove some sort of law or whatever, the police will also go the extra mile to do something about it or go the extra mile to make it more frightening for the citizens. So if, if it can be curbed is a key question that I think um, we need to answer. Now, to answer this, we have to look at it from the perspective of what is it, what's the reason for that police brutality. In America, it could be due to racism. But in Nigeria, like Diola said, is on another level. It comes down to um, different things such as um, lack of empathy from the side of the policemen. It, looks, it, it also looks at, um, we can also look at it from the part of uh, corruption. We can also look at it from the part of unreliable leadership in the police force. We can also look at it from the point of view that it is about survival or greed on the side of the police officers themselves. So we have a long way to go in respect of shifting the mindset of the police officer because the police officer will now look for some, the, the likelihood of you know getting a victim is coming back to the citizens and the citizens are vulnerable to them because they are underpaid, they are overworked, they are, they are un let me not use the word unenlightened, but they are not that exposed. So what would they do? They would react based on their emotions and based on the fact that, like Diola said, they could be probably high on something. So they're all looking for a way to you know, calm their nerves. And this stems from the fact that we have individuals or citizens who are living well, who are driving their cars, but the policeman has not been able to buy even the keke na pep. Okay. So you Let's... see that they are already they are already angry at the citizen. Absolutely. Let's absolutely let, I let just give me a minute. Let's go on a break. I want to open our phone lines. Mm. <laughs> hey, this is interesting. Mm. You say keke na pep. If the if the <laughs> work no do you, you see, why don't you resign and leave it? There are some things that, do you understand? There are some things that is, you have to be empathetic for you to be in those kinds of places. But there's no testing. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, we're discussing the topic, can police brutality be curbed? And we have all the ladies in the building. Now, remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Our phone line is now open, and the number to call is 0702500 That's the number to call. And I believe we have a caller, Grace. Okay, she's gone. Okay. Um, EC, so let me let you finish your thought, then I'll come back to Glory. So, like I said earlier, um, I was talking about the fact that it comes back to the vulnerable in the society. And who are the vulnerable in the society is the citizens who are vulnerable in the society. So what do they do, it irrespective of sex or gender? They would look for somebody who is like a prey to them and they would, you know, work well, I believe that. I believe it's vulnerability is spans across, it's not limited to citizens, right? Even the police officers, yeah. right? They are also vulnerable in some, if you look at it in, the, in some context, right? But, they, but in this context, they are the aggressive. Hmm. They are the aggressors. They are the ones that are after the citizens. They are the ones, look at the young man, even if he's in a wrong environment, not taking the Okada, um, riding the Okada on the wrong uh, part of the of town, he sh they should have found a way to interact with him. It's not like he stole something. What he just did was he was in the wrong um, area at that particular point in time. So empathy was totally lost there was nothing they 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 just felt that they were entitled Absolutely. to taking his bike doing what they wanted with him without any consequence and knowing fully well that he doesn't have anybody to stand in for him mm -hmm. look at the night we went we went um we were uh, coming back from the show during the NSAS period Osayuame. can you recall what the policemen did to us at Ajiwe the covid, uh, the COVID um, lockdown yeah i remember thank you yes <laughs> thank you so you can we, you can see that if you hadn't made that call to the, the uh, police authority you knew at the time, it would have been a different story for us as well. Mm. So it's not a thing of whether they are also victims. It is 
It is based on the reaction that they have. Mm. The fact that they said I should kill somebody, does that mean I should take the knife and stab the person? I can actually use my discretion and go about it in the in a civilized way. I don't have to do anything that is detrimental to myself as a person because they are supposed to be our protectors. If our protectors are stealing from us, raping us, or taking things from us, I've seen a situation whereby somebody said that he he I think this happened like two years ago where he said that he was um, robbed by policemen. The policemen told him to transfer money into their accounts. Uh, I think about a, a tin of about 150,000 naira uh, at the time. And he was a young man. They asked him, what kind of phone are you using? They shouldn't have done that. It's not their right. They don't know how this boy is surviving. They don't know how he's working. The same way they are working for their money is the same way he's working for his money. Okay. Irrespective of the fact that he must have, if, if, he's, a, if he's a fraudster or not a fraudster. Let so, me. Yes, let me. I would say hey, the, the key thing is that they should be better paid. They should be better trained. And that will lead to a shift in their mindset. And that will help them think better. Again, can it be curbed? Yes. But can it be eradicated? No. So let me, it cannot be eradicated. Let me hear, Glory, your <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> it cannot be eradicated. Um, listening to all of you talk, oh, it's a lot, especially your story, oh, Diola. Oh. I, I remember um, when my junior brother came to Nigeria for the first time, one of the things among which I told him to be careful is Nigerian police. And when I had mm -hmm. the second thought about it, it was so saddening because they are supposed to be protecting you. So why are you then telling someone that's meant to protect you, say, be careful of your mm -hmm. protectors? Mm -hmm. So that just shows how bad the system and corrupt the system is. Um, personally, when I'm, I'm um, on the road at night, I'm really sort of on ease, at on ease, because I don't like facing police checkpoint. I don't know what to expect. Mm. Back to the topic, can it be copped? Yes, just like Isi said, it can be copped. But I like the statement you made when you said a lot of things is happening in Nigeria all at once. So when do we expect this to happen? That's the question. Because from the end start till now, there's been no significant change. Some of the issues that were brought up then, I don't think it's still been addressed. Mm. And so when will it be copped? Can it be copped? Yes. Like Isis said, true reforms, true training. Mind but shift. The, mind shift. But the stakeholders, those who are supposed to be active participants in this, how willing are they to get involved in this? You know, the amount of impunity in the police system has really encouraged most of the police officers what they are doing because they know they can easily go free. Yeah. They are not held accountable. And even for some of them which are paraded, maybe by mistakenly a video capture someone, someone, so that's when they will come out yeah. to say, oh, we're doing this, we're doing that. At the end of the day, yeah, after a that. week, everything disappears. So how intentional, it could be called if the key stakeholders are intentional about making these reforms, taking steps. But then again, it's sudden because if we now talk about increasing their salary, because that's what most people will say, oh, they're underpaid, so that's the reason they collect bribes, that's the reason they do the things they do. But if you look at how would they even be paid, the Nigerian system, look at our economy, it's something else. You it's a lot of problems here and there. It's so difficult to, to resolve this, I, I will the Nigerian that. problem. I will debunk that, Gloria. They can be paid. They can be paid. It's due to corruption, where we have leaders who, are instead of them to pay them, they actually use the monies for something else. I mean, it's not about whether it's possible for them to be paid. I mean, what are we paying our, our lawmakers? It's possible for them to be paid. I was just going to say that, um, have you been to the police barracks before? It's um, a cesspool of... So, I think one of the fundamental problems, why it's going to be somewhat impossible for us to curb police brutality is because, I mean, you can't give what you don't have. Absolutely. Um, they have not been taught to value human life because mm -hmm. they don't even value their lives. Mm -hmm. If you go to the police barracks, you see the dilapidated states at which they are living. You go to the police, um, go to uh, any regular yeah. police stations, go to their toilets, go in there. You know, it's almost like, you know, like you are in, I can't even describe 
the living conditions mm -hmm. of these people. So if I don't understand what it means to value human life, there is absolutely no you way can't. I can yeah. also value somebody else's life. So I, I believe that um, it, it has to be a very deliberate uh, attempt, right? And mm -hmm. a deliberate action that needs to be taken. We must enforce it in a way that you must accept good things. Mm. And it's not, as I said earlier, it doesn't stop at the police. From the immigration, from the airport in Nigeria, when you're welcoming your people in Nigeria, that you <coughs> perceive that stench mm. of the urine and all of that. So, I mean, if you say to people that you are coming into a place where, you know, we understand and we respect and we love our citizens, and we give them the best, right? Mm -hmm. It will trickle down to every aspect of governance yeah. and yeah. leadership. Yeah. The pro police is just a branch. So mm -hmm. the problem is in the root of the tree. Mm -hmm. Police is just one problem that is that a, a corrupt root that has mm -hmm. already... So it is spreading out and bringing out corrupt branches. Mm -hmm. That's what is happening, right? Because I don't understand how... You know, we, we have gotten to this point where we do not even value human life. These people, yes, they break laws. And, and I, I mean, I've spoken to someone before that we all know is a friend of the house. And he said something. He said that even this traffic situation in Lagos, sometimes the law enforcement agencies deliberately yeah. create those chaos. Yeah. Because they know that in that chaos... Some so Nigerians will get bigger, agitated yes. and they want to break the law Absolutely. because they will not use that opportunity to generate yeah. revenue. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me take Ezekiel from Ogba, then I'll continue my thoughts. Ezekiel, you're live. Good evening. Uh, Very well, thank you. Now, I want to say that the police brutality can be caught in Nigeria, but it takes a whole lot of work. Now, I saw a video just today uh, around Abuleba where they took a bike from a guy. Here we know that a bike in that area has been banned. But then, even if you take the bike away from the owner, it should not be by force and you <laughs> beat the guy that he was bleeding. You know, it's, I mean, it's not too good. It, 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 I mean, it's kind of inhuman. Now, the issue of um, Shokuti, in spite of his man, he was wrong. He's wrong. But that issue you was know, taken up immediately. Quick action. They are now punishing him. Now, what the police are doing to Nigeria today is not good. And they will go scot free. Why should they are going to be a balance? If a citizen you know, slaps a policeman, that citizen will be punished immediately. But if a policeman beats a citizen, they will go scot free. The case of that woman that was killed in Lekki last year in, on Christmas Day, that case now has died down. Mm. We are not hearing anything again. No, it's so annoying. Thank you. But I believe that this case can be curbed. It can be curbed, absolutely. I believe so too. Um, I, I mean, this is, this is all coming off of the back of yeah. Sheung Kuti's um, arrest yeah. because now Sheung Kuti said, it was almost like a threat to his life. They, they wanted to kill him and his family. So that was the anger that agitated the slap. Mm. Even though I mentioned it the day we, we, we analyzed yeah. it, that I would not go to that extent. I would keep my cool. I would rather just, you know what, take on the situation, then report to the yeah. authorities. Yeah. Because again, some people actually, they actually want to test you. Mm. You know, so they, they, they want to touch that point where you also do, would react. I think yeah. I've learned patience to the extent where I'm able to control myself. So no matter what you bring at me, you don't control my actions. I control my actions. You know, you can take your actions. I would respond to you. And when you respond to people, you are always at you are yeah. always at a yeah. higher level than yeah. them. Yeah. You don't fall. You don't come to their level. You don't stoop low to their level. So I feel like Sheon Kuti should have been able to control himself. You know, and at least be you know um, controlled enough to just say, you know what, I will take. Take your name, take everything. I will go and report the details to the authorities. But of course, he lost the school. Mm. Let me take Loma from um, from Abia State, I believe. Loma, you're live. Is it there? Good evening. Thank you for calling. We have not seen you for some time. Yes. So we we jacked, <laughs> but we're back. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm greeting the other of my impact in the house. <laughs> Tell them good evening. Good evening. They're hearing you. Um, based on the, the question and the topic on the screen, this brutality can be caused if only the police authority, police service commission, inspector general police, there will be training and retraining. Because if you fail to train them properly and tell them what they need to hear, what they need to do at every point in time, the, the brutality against the civilian and, civil, and brutal from civilian to the police will not end. Because one problem with our security men is what they are, they are without their rifle. They think that they are on top of the wall. Whereas they are not on top of the wall. So one day I was just telling a concern man, what you're doing is not good. Please don't harass this guy. He said, he now point the gun, he not to agree. And look at him, and you want to kill me. It's quite unfortunate. So when there is a proper training, reorientation among them, if any of them offend, you make sure deal with them decisively. Absolutely. Thank you. We have to train them. That's what he's saying. Reorientate mm. their minds and all of that. And I'll go back to value of human life, mm. right? What value do we have for the human life, for the, the Nigerian? What value have we placed on their lives? Because you see, if you value something, you mm. will protect it, you will love it, you will nurture it, you will care for it. But if you do not value it, anybody can come and do anything. So, um, it's, it's, it, it's, a, it's a ripple effect. Absolutely. So until we are able to define the value of every human life in Nigeria, right, we, will, we might not be able to solve some of these problems that we face on a daily basis. You know, so yes, Sheon Kuti was wrong. And again, but Nigerians are coming. And they are coming in their numbers, bringing out all the videos. There was another video of the police um, using um, Koboko on a woman, you know, beating her mercilessly. Mm -hmm, They've that. also called on the IG to go and arrest those policemen. Like, I mean, there are evidences, video evidences across everywhere. Now, these days, any little thing you do, I brought out my yeah. phone to record and all of that. Um, so, I mean, there are evidences. So, I don't know how this would translate. Mm. But I just wanted to wrap up then. I'll come back to you ladies that what if we begin to change just the structure of living in Nigeria, right? That I don't have to worry about my food, what to eat, what to drink, you know, where to sleep. And do you understand? Like if the Maslow's hierarchy of needs that we have all moved out of that base level, mm where it is now everything, do you understand, like basic things, like normal social security things that you, you are secure to say, okay, I don't need to worry about certain things. Maybe I don't need to worry about my children's education. I don't really need to worry about it. Don't you think some of these things would just naturally have a natural burial? Because there will not be any need for desperation to want to like extort money from people. Or, because I know that my kids, uh, they're going to, going to go to a very decent school. They'll go and get a good education. You know, I'll be able to afford health care or um, insurance. I'll be able, do you understand what I'm saying? I don't know. I, I'm not sure that I agree with that. Like um, Isi said, um, police brutality is a, is a global issue. And um, it's almost safe to say that in some of these countries, well, popular, let's, let's use America as a yardstick. You probably, well, the odds that maybe seven out of ten will probably not have to worry about where their kids will go to school, if they can um, eat three square meals a day. As a police officer, is, I mean, it's very low. Like, you, you won't really have to worry. But they still brutalize No, people. see, Isi defined it well. Mm. She established the, the, the basis for, for police brutality abroad. Mm. It's racism. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, okay. It's racism. Okay. But let's let's what now. We, what we see in Nigeria is desperation, hunger. Mm. The man that harassed Isi and I, mm. survivor. survivor. The man that arrested Isi and mm. I that day that I had to call the PRO of Lagos State. The man was collecting fifty. What I heard was he was collecting fifty thousand naira for every car. Mm. We were we were supposed to be on the road because we are um, media personalities. We're coming from ways. Mm. We're going back home. 
But he was arresting everybody on that road because he had to make generate revenue. So he was extorting money from people. Mm. That for me is, is, is hunger, is, is, you know, is desperation. But do you know that at the core of it, Okay, so let you know me what, let, let me take experience from Aja. I think oh, you're okay. our final caller for the day. Hello. Experience, your life. Aha. Good evening, uh, Sister Owa. Hi, good evening. And the other ladies. Yeah, mine yeah. is just a uh, suggestion. Go Point ahead. Blank. Uh, there is a devil in that their uniform. I am proposing, <laughs> I'm suggesting the lady police uh, begin to wear probably white and red. Maybe white on top, <laughs> red below, or the other way around. There is a demon in that uniform. No matter the training you give to them. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet your life. Okay, so but they've changed their uniform now. No. It doesn't change anything. They buy the come uniform pig, themselves Come out, uh, pig, wash, buff uh, hey, nah. It doesn't change who the pig is. Go ahead. I had, um, I was traveling one day, you know, out Quickly. of town. Mm. And there was this police. He was so, you know, very, very brutal. You, pa, 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 you know, ah, don't beg, don't. And then somebody went to meet him and said, guy, you know, what's, he said, oh, do you know the target they gave me? Yes. They have returns. Okay, good. Now that returns. Now that's not... At the base level that you have said, it's understandable that it is this guy, okay, he's trying to do it for they survival. They have deliverables. But the person at the top who is requesting for returns is the person also trying to Are you to aware that law enforcement agencies in this country, they have deliverables to their bosses? That's what I'm they saying. must generate certain kinds of revenues. That's what I'm saying, that those bosses, are they also struggling to survive? <laughs> no, it is called exactly. greed. Exactly. They're not that. struggling to survive. That is greed. And that, that is greed. I earlier that it stems from corruption, and unreliable leadership, greed, and survival instincts in every police officer. Or it, it depends on the level that they are in. Glory is quiet. <laughs> I even think they, they, I think the, the one of the most important things they need to do is in recruitment. But again, there must be a reason why they, they, they don't think they should do better. The kind of people they recruit into the force. Because if you recruit That's someone that thing. knows better, they will do better. Mm. But you need to mm. recruit someone that does not know better. You recruit hungry eh, people exactly. Now. Exactly. 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 Go ahead, Glory. Exactly. Final thoughts. Um, everyone has said it all. There is need for reform and that intentionality, knowing that there is an issue. And until the stakeholders, the policy makers, those who are in charge of recruitment, do the needful, checking their psychological state, knowing people they are recruiting into the force. Yes, there are people that have mental issues and they are just recruiting them into police and they are unleashing Absolutely. their disabilities on people. So there is a need to check all of those things during the recruitment process. And also the need to also step up on, there's a need to step up on their pay too and all of that. Emotional stability is key. It's very key. You can't give somebody that is emotionally downcast. Yeah. I now give him a gun. <laughs> Or give her a gun as well. But thank you, ladies. Uh, we'll keep up talking about the topic because police brutality, it don't become Vaseline for everybody. We they rob them every day for this country. We'll keep the topic co coming. Um, thank you so much, Isi. Sorry, the phone lines are here. is buzzing. We can't take more calls. Uh, we run out of time. Thank you, Isi. Thank you, Diola. Thank and thank you, you Glory. Thank you. All right, so um, before we go, um, do ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Wayshore Africa. Um, you can interact with us further, drop a comment. More importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, invite your families and friends to watch. Please, this invitation, extend the invitation. Don't watch the show alone. <laughs> we need more people to be calling. Mm -hmm. yeah? All right, so um, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. We are not police. We are not, uh, we're sorry, we are not anti-police. We are not anti, we are anti-brutality. So, and uh, when people are complaining that, oh, you are attacking the police, it's not an attack on the police. We are just attacking the behavior, yeah. right? It is the behavior we don't like. We love the police force. They are our friends. We just want to condemn the bad behavior that is going around and curb this um, injustice. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.